please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. Good morning. Welcome to Bazaar Morning Call. I'm Lata and with me are Anuj and Surabhi today in place of Sonia. Well, uh, I think the last comment that we got from uh, the United States is important. Uh, is it four rate hikes? That was the last comment uh, we got from experts in the United States. I think what's now all pervading yesterday on Wall Street and today on Asian markets is the FOMC minutes. The economic projections, economy projections are clearly uh, much better than they were in uh, February. And that point has uh, initially taken positively and then taken very negatively by the U.S. Uh, markets. You saw the uh, Dow give up all its gains and the bond yields spiking to 2.93. So that's going to be the talking point today. And as if that is not enough in India as well, it uh, did look like there was mild greater hawkishness in the MPC minutes as well, Indian MPC minutes. And uh, as of all this was not enough, the GST numbers again came a little under the weather. So today it looks like the bond markets will have uh, some negative impact on equities. But we have to see. I mean, yesterday we did see some meaningful bottom being put in the equity markets. The point is, will that prevail and overcome the bond blues and the expiry queues? Or will we continue with the earlier intermediate trend of falling? Good morning, Lata. Good morning, Anuj. I guess I was just listening to the montage. It could be any any particular central bank we're talking about, right? Inflation, rates rising higher, the questions in the commentary is so similar. But um, given all the points that you made about Asia as well, you know, being under the weather, Anuj, uh, thoughts to you, and this is what mm. we've been discussing yesterday, the market just barely managing to hold last afternoon. But given the cues this morning, uh, is a Monday low retest uh, perhaps on the cards? Could a Feb 6 low retest be on the cards? Also the fact that it's expiry. <laughs> yeah, morning, sir. Good morning, Lata. I, I, I think uh, the SGX Nifty is giving you a fair indication. Let me make things very simple here today. The bank Nifty should hit a new 2018 low today. Uh, it's already done that mm. uh, and it should hit make a new low today. Uh, on the Nifty, things could be slightly different and I'll come ba back to that in a bit. The, the global picture is a bit murky again, right? And of course, you have expiry as well. The problem for this market is that FIs remain large sellers and you know if you're selling an HDFC at 1830 or 1840, you would sell it at 1860 or 1870 and that is right now the problem. It's visible in large financials, it's visible in stocks like Mothers and Sumi, but wherever you have large FI exposure, obviously there's a bit for selling. Yesterday's low of 10,349 on the Nifty could be breached at open itself. The Feb 6 low of 10,276 is now a sacrosanct number to watch on the Nifty. Uh, as I said, you know, the, the bank nifty already yesterday's low was a fresh low of 2018. And there's a good chance that 24,796, which was the low yesterday, because macro news impacts bank nifty the most. And you know, you have a perfect cocktail right now of uh, weak global markets, uh, currency market weakness, money market weakness, and of course, uh, all this, uh, you know, uh, yesterday this crazy and stupid thing that a lot of people did with that fake circular on, you know, trying to you know, p p tell people to cover their shots. I mean, uh, mm -hmm. how stupid can you get? I think honestly? you explained it really well on the, the Periscope. No, no, I, I, I thought, yeah. you know, I thought it was my duty to just go out on and explain what was happening there, you know. And I can't believe people fell for it, actually, frankly. You know, the, that, you know, it was... Possibly markets it was, were closed. Yeah, it, thankfully, the market was closed. Uh, you know, it was, I mean, sp spelling mistakes, half of the stocks, I'm and not, not even, even part of FNO. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so, uh, you know, the, the short point here is that there, 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 there could be some selling. But there's one silver lining here. The silver lining is that uh, this market has at least one large sector which is in bull market, and that is IT, IT. sector. And the market now is, has shown you classical indicators. And, you know, we discussed it in last quarter of last year when the financials weight went to 42% or thereabout in the index. Uh, anecdotally, when one sector takes that large a position, you normally see a bit of a topping out of that sector and something else taking over leadership. IT is now the leader of this market. So there's a good chance, of course, at start, maybe everything falls. There's a good chance that, you know, stocks like TCS, Infosys, HCL Tech probably don't left, let Nifty fall too much. And especially if the currency is also a bit weak, that would help. So there's one sector which is going to help you mm. as far as the Nifty is concerned. So for today, I think there could be a good chance of looking at, you know, weakness in the bank Nifty but at lower level, some strength in uh, in Nifty as well. Of course, all of this is out of window if you start to make fresh lows. Uh, in that case, the expiry queues, of course, will take over. Okay, all right. So we'll, we're going to watch out for those sacrosanct levels, as Anuj pointed out, the Monday low as well as the Feb 6 low. But uh, Lata, very quickly, before we move to the calls of the day, 
your thoughts on the GST number because then there was also you know the caveat that look this is not the end of the month number maybe the number will be revised higher yeah uh, is that really going to play on the bond markets mind no. today see you know our earlier collections look at the bar chart mm -hmm. it used to range in the 90 thousands and then we started dipping because also we cut rates mm -hmm. now the expectation is that India consumes more in the second half mm -hmm. because these are busy season months uh, I mean monsoon months are not consumption months so the expectation yeah. always was that we will make up in Jan Feb and March that the average will work out higher that is why this 81,000 82,000 is a disappointment even if it rises it will be 84,000 according to uh, mm. experts through two or three more days of uh, collections mm. but we were expecting that they will make up for the earlier shortfall mm. we are no way there we are still in the you know uh, even lower than December actually if you go to see now the worry is not about uh, it's not that there'll be more borrowing now but it is just that why did we introduce GST in the first place because you want a higher tax to GDP some way compliance is falling but e-way bill I think that's why they're saying mid-March Lata oh. maybe that's really going to be the stick that is required to get these numbers higher because right now it's all voluntary filing right it, no absolutely yeah. I mean yeah. uh, uh, it should be like that uh, do you, I do taxes should be <laughs> paid and not with a gun to your head but yeah I think that is going to be a source of worry and you know already look at the uh, bond yield yesterday sensing that the uh, MPC minutes will be hawkish they've already got you know we are talking about the new tenure about four weeks back the old tenure was at this level the new tenure 7.7 <laughs> is a bit worrisome if you pick up the old tenure it is 7.9 and therefore today with the bad global cues or rather the uh, you know higher global mm -hmm. yields and uh, the GST numbers which the market has to react to I won't be surprised if this went higher and that's always negative absolutely it's something that will play on the minds of all of the NBFC NBFC banks. and bank traders out there absolutely okay on that note let's move on and take a look at what the wise experts have to say as we get into trade this morning Louis Alexander of Nomura says the FOMC minutes from the January 30 31st meeting were in line with their current expectations of four hikes in calendar year 2018 with the next hike at the upcoming March meeting however he adds the minutes as well as developments since the January FOMC meeting point to an increased likelihood of a more hawkish tone in the March meeting okay so everyone's now or, or rather many people have started talking about four eight hikes from the Fed uh, actually we have a very quick commodity call as well today because it was it simply comes from a very important person Edward Moss of City says that despite market jitters he continues to view the current macro backdrop of strong synchronized global growth weak dollar and rising inflation as very positive for the commodities complex he says fundamentals also look strong across a host of markets including industrial metals uh, agriculture and even some bulks like iron ore with energy being one of only few exceptions to the bullish story now you know Anuj I put in this uh, commodity quote merely to say that equity markets can also react positively I mean if commodities are growing despite higher bond yields all that the commodity markets are watching is this huge global growth story mm. sooner or later equities will have to take cognizance of they that. will and you know I tell you something uh, even for today but you know you, you don't know if there could be some short covering as well in the especially in the second half first half obviously looks a bit weak uh, because of what the, the global views are but if lows are respected uh, then there could be some short covering as well uh, and uh, you know uh, you know with couple of sectors obviously are in a bull market of their own so it's uh, like IT, you know yeah. it's yeah, like IT and even metals so uh, I completely take your point mm. that uh, they could be buying as well the problem right now is that the quantum of FI selling is just way too large mm -hmm. and that's you know at every higher level that's the problem with the market that's soaking up the yeah. liquidity okay all right let's move to the money market cues and for the day Mohan Shinoy of Kotak Mahindra Bank says the US FOMC minutes cause market volatility with US Treasury yields touching a new high US stock markets reversing early gains and the dollar strengthening further he says recent negative developments in the Indian banking sector have put pressure on the rupee he says the USD INR pair is expected to trade in a range of 6475 to 6505 for the day could reach that psychological mark yeah 65 is important 6480 was believed to be technically important so crossing that uh, could take the rupee weaker Mohan Chenoy says the Reserve Bank MPC minutes for February highlighted upside risks to inflation due to rising crude prices 
MSP, minimum support price increases, fiscal slippage and pay commission implementation. It says the GSEC market is expected to continue to be bearish with low demand and falling trading volumes. He says the 10-year benchmark bond yield is expected to trade in a range of 7.74 to 7.79. And this is the new 10-year Mohan is talking about going to 7.8. Okay, let's talk about that big global setup. Here's Nigel with the world view. Well, uh, there was a very volatile trading session that we saw in the U.S. markets. 11 p.m. India time, you were going to sleep. You'd say, well, the Dow was trading with a the, with the gain of around a couple of hundred points. By the time it ended up, in fact, it, it reversed all of those gains, ended well in the red. Well, wh why was that? A more hawkish sounding Fed minutes is what uh, the street was reacting to. That's what led to a spike on the bond yields. The U.S. bond yields went to around that 3% odd mark. And that is, in fact, a four-year high. So that's what really caused all the trouble. The S&P 500, remember, it was on a bit of a winning streak. So it reversed all of that six-day winning streak, was done away with. The real estate index was under pressure. That was down close to around 2%. But if we're looking for some green in terms of the U.S. markets, well, advanced auto spare parts, that one, in fact, did quite well. It reported a strong set of numbers. Shifting focus to the European markets then, we had uh, some green on the screen over there. The CAC as well as the FTSE, both of them ended well in the green, while the DAX was a relative underperformer. Basic resources, that space did quite well. We had Glencore that came out with several numbers. It was up close to around 5% by the time it wound up. We had travel sector as well that did pretty well in yesterday's trading session. And IT stocks, tech stocks, they started off lower, but they reversed some of those losses by the time we did uh, wind up. Shifting focus to some of those Asian markets, well, you have the Shanghai market that's opening after a good one-week uh, holiday. So that's, in fact, the only speck of green that you're seeing on the screen, while the other Asian markets, they're under some pressure. And the SJX Nifty is suggesting a 40 to around a 50-point downtick just to kickstart trade. Back to you all. Okay, Nigel, thanks a lot for that. 10,338 is what we have on the Nifty Futures. Today's expiry, so that's the spot level as well for you, which, will, I mean, if it's right, is indicating that we'll start uh, below yesterday's low. Let's focus on that, on those FOMC minutes. We have Richard Harris now joining us, Chief Executive at Port Shelter Investment Managers now. Uh, Richard, good morning. Your thoughts on uh, uh, those FOMC minutes and uh, uh, do you think that this could lead to some more near-term pain for emerging markets in particular? Well, I don't think the minutes really tell us anything new other than what we'd already thought before, you know, and in fact, they follow very much a similar line of uh, Fed minutes that have been coming uh, increasingly bullish. I think the attention really has been put on these minutes because we've had the recent fall and we've had the recent inflation frenzy, you know, with the markets worried about inflation and then worried about interest rates going up. So I see it very much uh, in line with what we're saying and that the markets may be paying a little more attention to the growth story because that's the thing that they fear most at the moment. Okay. Uh, good morning, Richard. Well, uh, you know, today, for the, for the moment only, we have the combination of uh, rising dollar and uh, uh, rising yields as well. Up until two weeks ago, this was a bit disjointed. We saw the uh, dollar falling, uh, although we saw yields continuing to rise. Is this, for the moment, a bad combination for equities? I don't think so. I suspect it's uh, uh, a temporary feature. I mean, my general feeling about this uh, particular fall is that really it was a consolidation fall. It was a fall uh, of some size, but it was a fall within a bull market. You know, when we want to get... Uh, worried about things, we need to worry about a fall like this uh, that happens within a bear market. So at the moment, it seems to be like a consolidation fall. Now, recoveries take some time. We always think they're going to be quite quick, but they take some time. I rather suspect we may be looking till um, uh, the end of March, maybe April, before we see a real recovery. Um, but I think a real recovery is going to come through because I think there are a lot of bull points for equities as well. Um, but in the meantime, we are going to see this battle between uh, inflation. Is it going to go up? How much is it going to go up? Uh, are rates going to go up? And how much are they going to affect growth? So I think we're going to see this battle for a little while. But I think there are still enough bull points out there for equities to, uh, to, to rally, uh, say, in the second quarter. Interesting point, uh, Richard. Uh, good evening to you. So... Um... Has the market priced in the 3% level on the U.S. 10-year? And what are the bull points that you refer to? Well, you know, the market short term may think it hasn't. But don't forget that, uh, what, three years ago, we were seeing 3% as well in a much worse economic situation. And I think the thing that investors basically have to look at is to say to themselves, 
are the economies strong enough now to take higher interest rates? Uh, I'm not talking about 8 or 9%. I'm talking about uh, 3 4 5%. Are they strong enough? Mm. Um, and that's really your answer. I think they are strong enough. As a result, I think that the uh, economies and markets will continue to do fairly well. Now, that's not to say in the long term we don't have a lot of problems to face. Mm. Uh, but I think if we're looking on a six-month view, uh, that there's still plenty of room for equities to do well. Okay. What's your take on India itself? I mean, we've been battling uh, high yields on our own without uh, the U.S. yields helping us. Uh, the MPC minutes yesterday, the Monte Paul Security meet minutes were also slightly on the hawkish side. But more than that, tax collections have not been as good as it should be. Is there, uh, I mean, uh, uh, the Indian equity markets are falling for other reasons as well. Do you see value now in Indian equities? Um, I think that there is value, but mainly because uh, equities uh, look as if they do want to go up uh, all around the world. And at okay. this stage of the cycle, we do seem to see movements in emerging markets that are positive. Mm. It looks like China's uh, quite positive at the moment. Um, I think India will follow that, as will probably the oil producing uh, emerging markets. Um, you know, bull markets don't go up uh, in a straight line all the time. They do have periods of consolidation. Uh, there are always negatives in the market, which are used as excuses to sell. Um, but my general feeling has been that there's still some life in emerging markets yet. Okay. All right, we leave it at that. Uh, Richard, thank you very much for kind of pepping up uh, spirits uh, out here. This is a bull market for equities, and uh, you know there'll be some equity markets which will do better than others. But uh, Richard expects that uh, you know buying returns to India as well. Uh, we'll uh, take that sentiment with both hands, but let's see if in the near term this helps. Let's uh, leave you with some more Im uh, important opinion that we got. Uh, Uday Kotak spoke to uh, Shireen Bhan of CNBC TV18 and said that he's embarrassed as a banker, and that was in reaction to the 11,400. Uh, uh, crore rupee uh, alleged fraud that took place in uh, Punjab National Bank. Uh, Uday Kotak adds that it's time to focus on a new institutional framework for PSU banks. Here him out, we'll play you lots more of that interview. I remember having a chat with you in exactly the same spot last year and we were talking about the governance premium that India enjoys. In light of what we're seeing happen today, specifically with the public sector banking stocks and its after effect on corporate India in general, do you believe that there is a loss of that governance premium? I think what's happening in India now from the point of view of in institutional investors and investors in general is that the number of companies which would get governance premium would narrow. Mm. And I think India overall has to really do a, a series of things to ensure that we don't get governance discount. And in that context, I'm happy that uh, uh, on behalf of uh, a committee which was formed by SEBI, which I had the privilege of chairing, we have submitted our corporate governance uh, report and uh, we are awaiting the government and SEBI to take the next steps on that towards a better governed corporate India. Mm. Do you think that there is a need for urgency today? Uh, and, you know, I, I remember listening to what you had to say in Delhi a couple of uh, uh, days ago where you said that as a banker you stand ashamed about what has happened as far as the NPA situation is concerned and how the NPA situation has gone out of control, so to speak. Uh, you said you were embarrassed, you were ashamed. Uh, again, I ask you this in light of what we've seen happen uh, because it's not just negligence. Uh, it seems to point towards complicity. You know, I, I continue to believe that I am embarrassed as a banker and even more as a part of the financial sector in terms of what has happened uh, in India, especially based on the re reports as of now, which is in addition to the whole issue about stress in the financial sector. I think uh, we have to really think about two major areas of the future for banking and mm. finance. Mm. That is around governance and ownership of banks in India. Mm. And we have uh, talked about it. I think the time has come now for a significant policy and institutional thinking on that rather than more talk. Mm. There's a hell of a lot of talk which has gone on. And without pointing figure, fingers, which seems to be uh, the uh, name of the game right now, mm. whether it is uh, the regulator or the banker or 
uh, anybody else. I think the focus has to be to find institutional framework and a policy kind of approach mm. to fixing some of the key issues in Indian banking. But what would be a healthy correction? I think uh, we have seen a close to uh, 8 to 10 percent correction in the big caps and probably a 20 to 30 percent correction in the small and mid caps. So um, somewhere in the single digit corrections from here is what I would, in the big caps, mm. is what I would see as getting the markets to a fundamentally more healthy level. Now whether mm. there's 5 percent, 10 percent, uh, I think that's something which would give fundamental corrections. But keep in mind, beyond fundamentals, technicals can move markets sure. on either side. Sure. Uh, quite a bit. Mm. And fundamentals are not static as well. Mm. It also depends on a lot of changing factors. So you've got to keep on moving your fundamental value right. with the changes. The good news as I see it today, mm. okay, is over the last three or four years, whenever we would talk about chasing growth, mm. we had a wonderful macroeconomic tailwind in our favor. Yeah. Uh, this time around, as it's I speak to you, I think micro has picked up. Mm. We are seeing growth on the ground, mm. but the macro tailwinds are not as favor favorable as they were over the last three mm. years. Okay, so that's the word from, from the top banker. Macro tailwinds maybe aren't that favorable. Micros looking much, much better. We'll get you more of that conversation through the course of the day.